If you've just worked hard on a brand new Gradle task, wouldn't you want to make sure that it's discoverable to anybody working within that project? Well, normally when people want to discover what tasks are available in a project, they run Gradle W tasks. But this output doesn't necessarily list all the tasks, it only lists the ones that have been assigned a group. So let's see if we can follow this Gradle best practice tip to always provide a task group and description to make our tasks discoverable. Here we've got a brand new fresh Gradle project, fresh off the production line, and I'm going to add a new task. So let's imagine that Joe Bloggs comes along and he wants to know what tasks are available in this project. So he runs Gradle W tasks, just like any human being would do. Well, all he finds are the standard default tasks that come with any Gradle project. And now he's feeling a little bit sad. He was hoping for some Gradle tasks related to some classic kids 80s movies. I trusted your old mother boy! Well, all is not lost, my friends, because we have another trick in our sleeves and we can register this task with a group and a description. So to provide a group, we just call the group function. And can you guess how we provide a description? So now John Doe comes along looking for some fun and he wants to discover what's available in this project. So he runs Gradle W tasks. Bingo, he thinks, just what I was looking for. And of course, the nice thing about Joe Bloggs and John Doe using the tasks output is that it's dynamic. As tasks are added or removed, it's updated, whereas documentation tends to get out of date. So don't be a goonie and remember to add a group and description to your tasks. That way you can build up a nice suite of tasks and anyone interacting with your project can find them. See you next time.